Hey Kid Experience, I'm so excited to travel with you today. In our On The Go series, I want to take you to a new and exciting place every week. Where do you think we're going to go today? I hope you're ready to buckle up and strap in because we're in for a wild, wild ride. Yeehoo!
trust you deeper, keep believing that you are. I wanna walk on water. to week six of our travels. Wow, that means we've been to five whole countries so far and we have literally traveled across the globe. Yeah, we have. Me, you, and all of our KE friends are officially professional travelers. No one can take that from us. And what's even cooler is that we've gotten to learn all about the different names that we have for God. And I wonder if we can recall all of them. Oh, let me try, let me try. Okay. God is my Lord, my shepherd, my healer. Yes, yes, yes. And my father, my defender. What else could he be? Hmm, I guess we'll have to find out on this final trip of ours. <gasps> I'm so excited. Grab your bags and put your earbuds in and start snacking because it's time to go. We'll see you there, KE friends. mis amigos, yo soy Wanda Round, your highest quester investor for all your global adventures. And today, you've arrived in Mexico. This place is beautiful, as you can already see. But wait, do you feel that? That slight sinking feeling? You're not just imagining things, nope. Mexico is actually sinking at the rate of six to eight inches every single year. That means Mexico will be completely underwater one day. Never fear while you're here though, because scientists predict that it'll be a couple hundred years before that happens. So you've got plenty of time to build your submarine. Until then, why don't you enjoy some chocolate? Mexican chocolate has quite the spice. Not your thing? No worries. There's plenty of popcorn to go around. Before it was your favorite movie theater snack, the corn kernels got popping here first. Still not your deal? Maybe a 150 pound tamale would hit the spot. Mexico is not just known for their love of food, but also dogs. This country loved a certain tiny dog so much that they named it after the great state of Chihuahua. Now that's a cute little guy. They should have named the whole country after him. Well, let's not forget Mexico's amazing pottery. If someone says they're continuing the family business, they're probably talking about the art of making clay pots. Those pots are used for everything, from cooking to even decorating churches. But that's not all you'll find while you're here. There are many sports you can play during your visit. Among the most popular are soccer, baseball, and even, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Bullfighting, ole! Ay, 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 viva Mexico! Ah, tamales, popcorn, chihuahuas, pottery. I can 
feel the Mexican culture all around me. I love it already. Okay, and look, I came prepared. I even have this red t-shirt right here, and it'll be perfect for my bullfighting adventures. Okay, no. no Bring it on. Totally, maybe we should put that away. You know, you don't want to attract a bull where you don't want one, you know? <laughs> oh, duh. Good thinking. I'm glad you threw that. I'll keep yeah. an eye out and see if I spot a bull anywhere. I guess we want to steer clear away from those outside of the arena. Woo. Hey, how about we spot the difference? The difference? Yeah, a spot the difference game. Oh, okay, let's play. me some spot the difference. K.E. friends, you guys are so good at that. I wonder what else we'll spot here in Mexico. There's so much to see. What do you think our GeoQ app will have set aside to take home as a souvenir this time? Oh, I don't know, but whatever it is, it'll be special. I know it. This is our final souvenir of our On The Go series. Let's check in with GeoQ. First up, clue number one. You can find them anywhere. Food is everywhere. I hope it's something I can snack on. <laughs> well, our second clue says that each one is uniquely crafted by hand. Tamales are crafted by hand. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I think our third clue will rule out tamales because it says that it's nice to have on hand because of its many uses. Any guesses from our fellow questers? You have just a few more seconds. It was a clay jar. Great work, GeoQuest users. Now that you found today's souvenir, let's see what Juan's got to say. Ah, perfect. For real though, so many uses. Before my bebida was in there, which is Spanish for drink, this was just a pencil holder. And now, refreshing. You know, I'm so glad you found the jar because it has a very special story that goes along with it. I mean, what would a souvenir be without a great story? This one is from the Bible and is about a prophet named Elijah who God would drop special messages on for the people to hear. One day, God told Elijah to go to the valley near the Jordan River. Elijah didn't mind, but he wondered, what's there to eat? Did he need to bring a lunch or what? 
God let Elijah know that he didn't need to worry about his next meal because he could drink from the brook and get this, ravens, yeah, those, they would be delivering his food. Elijah took off towards the Jordan River, and sure enough, the ravens brought him an awesome meal every morning and night. Too bad they couldn't bring him a pepperoni pizza. Uh, hi, yeah, ravens? I like to order a large pizza with extra cheese and pepperoni. Yeah, and a side of breadsticks. Okay, thanks, bye. Things were great, but there was just one problem. It hadn't rained for a long time, and eventually, the brook was bone dry. What was Elijah gonna do? This could have been a big problem for him, but he knew that God always provided for what he needed. And without fail, God told Elijah to leave the valley and go to another town where he would meet a widow. She would take care of him from there. Elijah obeyed, and just like God said, there she was, gathering sticks. So Elijah walked up to her and asked her if she could bring him a jar of water. As she walked away to get his drink, Elijah then asked her for a piece of bread too. Ya boy needed to grub. The widow told Elijah that she didn't have any bread and only a small bit of flour and a drop or two of oil. In fact, that's why she was gathering sticks, to go home and cook one last meal for herself and her son. After that, she was sure this would be the end of the road. They would starve and die. Elijah told her not to worry, you know, about the whole dying thing, but to go home and make some food. He told her to bring him a loaf for one. After that, she could make some bread for her and her son. Elijah let her know that God had said she wouldn't run out of flour or oil. So the widow went back home and did what Elijah told her to do. And sure enough, it worked. Elijah had food every single day and there was even enough food for the widow and her son. It was like an all-you-can-eat bread buffet. Bread for days, y'all. The jar of flour wasn't used up, and the jug always had oil in it. God provided what they needed and more. So, Questers, when you look at that jar, remember that one of the names of God is Provider. That's because God loves us and knows exactly what we need. He promises to provide for us, and he does. Well, until we meet again, keep on questing like the best in. Adios, mis amigos. Wow, how amazing is it that the woman's clay jar of flour and her jar of oil were always full? Yeah, she kept using it and using it to make food, but she never ran out. She never had to make an emergency trip to the grocery store or ask her neighbor for some extra flour or oil. God provided everything that she needed to make more than enough food for her, her son, and Elijah. That is amazing. Can you imagine how crazy it must be to witness a never-ending jar of supply? Like magic, but not magic because it was God. So cool. It goes to show that we really never have to worry when we put our faith and trust in God. The widow was about to die from hunger, but God provided right on time. And you're so right. And that brings us to our takeaway for the day. Stand up with us, KE friends, for our Mexican takeaway for the day. Andale, andale, amigos, levántate, hurry up and stand up. All right, KE friends, here we go. Repeat after me. God is. God is. My provider. My provider. You guys did amazing. Let's do it all together this time. Ready? God, God is. My provider. That was great, guys. Stay standing as we go over our memory verse. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Psalms 9 10. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Psalms 9, 10. Those who know your name, trust in you. For you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Psalms 9, 10. I can't stop moving my feet. Praise God now. And move to the beat. Just don't stop moving your feet. Clap your hands. Now turn, turn, turn to the beat. Praise God now. And move your feet. 
One arm forward, elbow up high. Come on, y'all. Let's ride. I won't stop the praising my God. He's better than good. Won't stop. In the air, cause I'm gonna praise God everywhere. Now wait to the people standing over there. Do I look like a fool? I don't care. Lean back, give God the glory. Lean, lean, yeah, that's the story. Start a more and say a prayer. Cause I'm gonna praise God everywhere. I won't stop the praising my God. Better than good. Won't stop. we say adios, let's take a quick minute to reflect on what we've learned today. What did Elijah and the widow need? God could have given them anything that they needed in any way he wanted. Why do you think he chose to provide it by setting the ravens and multiplying the oil and flour? Do you think you would have anything if God didn't provide it for you? Why or why not? Amigos, the best part of the KE service is here. We're getting to talk to our forever friend. I love getting to talk to God, so let's do it right now. Hey God, thank you so much for providing for us. Help us remember to always ask you for what we need and believe that you'll give it to us. We love you, amen. Woo, that was crazy. My goodness, it was a bumpy ride out there. I'm glad we made it back safe and sound. There's no one I'd rather travel with than you, kid experience. But remember, until next week in our next adventure, stay safe and keep trusting God. He will take you to new heights. Yeah, new heights. <laughs> till next time. 